These are the recorded lectures for Chapter 20 on viruses, bacteria, and archaea. Now you'll notice throughout the lectures that I have um, highlighted in yellow um, the important concepts. Um, so if you are taking notes, I encourage you to take notes particularly on the highlighted um, portions. So chapter 20 covers microorganisms, um, well, it, except for the protozoans um, that are in the domain eukarya. So it covers all the, the bacteria, the archaea, uh, both, both of these are um, the other two domains. There are three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. And um, so chapter 20 covers the bacteria and the archaea, but it also covers viruses, viroids, and prions. So we'll start with those. Um, a virus is actually similar to a living thing, but is not considered a, a true living thing um, because it, for one thing, it can only reproduce using a host cell. It must it must invade a host cell and then take advantage of the host cell's machinery, the host cell's metabolic machinery. Um, like uh, as far as the enzymes and um, other components that are necessary for um, replication and producing proteins, um, replication, transcription, and translation, if you remember from Bio 111, um, all of that. Um, all of those um, components are found in the host cell, and the virus basically uh, kind of tricks the host cell into making new viruses. The virus is also non-cellular. It is not surrounded by a plasma membrane, except sometimes in the case of, well, there's no exceptions, but in the case of enveloped viruses, the envelope is composed of uh, the plasma membrane and um, cell wall sometimes of the host. So in that way, but it's still not the, the um, it's still not a true cell. <clears throat> many viruses have, or I'm sorry, I saw the word may and thought it was many. Viruses may have either a DNA or an RNA genome. So a virus can have DNA or RNA, but not both. And then down at the bottom, Louis Pasteur is a scientist that is known for discovering the process of pasteurization. Um, but he is also the first to use the word virus, which is Latin for poison. This is a table, table 20.1, that lists several diseases in humans that are caused by viruses. Um, so these are viral diseases, not bacterial or um, protozoans, you know, just caused by viruses. AIDS, of course, is caused by the HIV virus. Genital warts, the human papilloma virus. Genital herpes is the herpes virus. There's the Zika virus. These are all STDs or STIs, sexually transmitted infections. Um, then there's childhood diseases that we get vaccines for, such as mumps, measles, chicken pox, uh, the German measles. And then we have so many, we all know this, so many respiratory diseases that are viral, such as the common cold, the influenza or flu virus, SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome. Um, and then we have uh, the coronavirus and COVID. Um, skin diseases such as warts, fever blisters, and shingles, which comes from um, a latent version of the chickenpox virus. Uh, other diseases like smallpox, mononucleosis, or mono, the kissing disease, which is what it's um, sometimes called. Um, gastroenteritis and diarrhea are not always just viruses, of course. They can be bacterial. But uh, most of these on this table are, are just viral. The structure of viruses. So you need to know about viruses that they have at least two parts. They have a core, which is their 
nucleic acid core, either DNA or RNA, and then they have a protein capsid. Sometimes outside the capsid, there will be an envelope, which is composed of plasma membrane and um, proteins, uh, specific proteins that are um, called glycoproteins that are present in the membrane. Um, and if they have an envelope, they're called enveloped virus, viruses. And if they don't, they're called naked viruses. So this is a good um, flow chart, I guess, for virus structure. For your virus particle, you're going to have an inner core. It's either going to be DNA or RNA, but not both. And sometimes there will be enzymes, um, such as like DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase. Some of the enzymes that are involved in replication transcription and translation. And then the covering outside the core, there's always a capsid, always a protein capsid, and sometimes an envelope. Here's some images of viruses, different viruses. This is an adenovirus, which has a helical shape. Um, it is a um, naked virus. It does not have an envelope. It, the core is this um, green structure. And then inside you see the nucleic acid is DNA. Uh, we have on the right a bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects bacteria. Um, and this one has uh, a capsid and then it has these structures that help it to anchor itself to the surface, to the cell wall of the bacteria. Um, and it is a DNA virus. Then we have the tobacco mosaic virus, which infects plants, um, many plants, not just tobacco. It also infects um, orchids and tomatoes and many, many others. But it is an RNA virus. And um, it does have a helical, um, I think I said helical. I didn't mean to say helical. I meant to say um, it's like a geometric polyhedral, not helical. But it's like a geometric shape that the capsid forms in the adenovirus. But going back to the tobacco mosaic virus, it does have a helical capsid with RNA um, inside. Now we see in um, the picture on the right an animal virus. It's actually a human virus, influenza. Um, but of course, there are other animals that get the flu, the bird flu, and you know, um, uh, different versions of the flu and different animals. But this shows you what the envelope looks like. So the capsid is green. The virus is an RNA virus. And then it has a green capsid outside the RNA. And then you see the envelope with all of these spikes. And these spikes are glycoproteins. Um, now, viruses are parasitic. They have a parasitic nature. We refer to them as obligate intracellular parasites. Obligate means that they rely on a host cell. They cannot reproduce outside a living cell. And intracellular means they must um, enter that cell. They must be inside of that cell um, in order to reproduce. If we try to grow viruses for study um, or to make vaccines, that kind of thing, we can only culture or grow viruses inside living cells. So we do that either inside of a chicken egg, if it's an animal virus, or through tissue culture, if it's a plant virus. Um, the reproduction of viruses involves five stages. First, there's the attachment of the virus to the surface of the host cell. The penetration involves either the virus being engulfed by the host cell or the virus will inject its DNA or RNA into the host cell. Biosynthesis is the part where the host cell produces the components to make new virus. Maturation is when those components are assembled, and then the new viruses are released from the cell. They're either released through the cell lysing which means that it kills the host cell, or budding, uh, releasing those viruses and the host cell would survive. Damaged, but it would survive. Now, this next section is on um, 
the life cycles of bacteriophages, which are, again, viruses that infect bacterial cells, these have been studied um, and their life cycles have been studied. And we use this knowledge to help us understand the life cycles of other viruses. But there are two life cycles that you need to be familiar with. The one of where that we just described, okay, that life cycle where you have attachment, penetration, biosynthesis, maturation, and release, that's called the lytic cycle. And after, once the lytic cycle reaches that last stage, the host cell undergoes lysis. So the host cell is killed. Then there is the lysogenic cycle, which is the uh, part of this uh, life cycle where uh, viruses can actually go into a dormant or a latent stage. <clears throat> and what happens is the DNA of, from the virus is integrated into the host cell's genome, into the host cell's DNA. And um, it doesn't, uh, it isn't, um, it just remains there for a while. So, for example, diphtheria. Diphtheria is one that we get vac vaccinated for when we're children. Diphtheria is caused by a prophage carrying bacterium, and a prophage is just the viral DNA and bacterial DNA. Once they've integrated, it's called a prophage. So, diphtheria is caused by a bacterium that carries a prophage and produces a toxin that damages the lining of the upper respiratory tract, and it, it, it affects breathing. Here you see an illustration of the lytic cycle. So you see the attachment of the virus to the bacterial cell, which is its host. You can see the bacterial DNA is circular. And then you see the uh, penetration the viral DNA is being injected into the host cell. And then you see biosynthesis where the host cell has, has produced the components of the virus, which are basically the green capsid here and then the DNA. And then maturation is when the virus is assembled. And then once it is ready to leave and infect other host cells, it will cause its host cell to lice. It will destroy the host cell that it's in. And then all the new viruses will be released to infect other host cells. Now on this page, the lysogenic cycle has been incorporated. So basically after penetration, the DNA can uh, combine with the DNA of the bacterium, which is the host cell, and now we call it a prophage. The prophage is the bacterial and viral DNA combined, and uh, that stage will, it will cause the um, virus to remain dormant, and it can remain dormant for long periods of time, but a lot of times it'll be something stressful in the environment um, that will uh, cause a, a virus to come out of that lysogenic cycle and enter the lytic cycle again. In other words, to become active again. Um, and in humans, it would be something like, and, and by the way, humans don't go, human viruses, we don't call them lytic and lysogenic cycles. We just say active and inactive, but it's still similar. Um, so the inactive in humans would be the lysogenic cycle when the virus, viral DNA is incorporated and it's just, um, but it's not producing virus right now. You know, I know I'm sure you've heard about that with HIV. Um, HIV can, can remain dormant for many, many years. So can other viruses. And then they, they, can, um, they can all of a sudden become active because the person gets sick with something else or because the person is under a great deal of stress in their life. You know, something is going to trigger the, um, cells, the host cells to begin producing viruses actively. And once that happens in a bacterium, the biosynthesis um, will occur and then maturation and then release. As far as animal viruses, the animal virus actually will enter the host cell, not inject its DNA or RNA, but actually enter uncoating will release the, it, what will happen is it will uncoat. It will, 
everything on the outside of its DNA or RNA core will um, uncoat from the virus. And um, then here you can see on this slide, it also mentions retroviruses. Retroviruses are very interesting. HIV is a retrovirus. So is the common cold virus. Um, they're tricky and they're very tricky to make a vaccine for. You can, you, you really can't make a vaccine, a very effective vaccine for a retrovirus um, because they, they just, they mutate at high rates and um, they're just very tricky to our immune systems. But the retroviruses contain an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. If you'll remember from Bio 111, transcription is when DNA makes a copy of messenger RNA. And then the messenger RNA carries the uh, code into the cytoplasm to a ribosome and proteins are produced. But with reverse transcriptase, you're starting with RNA because the virus is an, it's an RNA virus. And reverse transcriptase converts the RNA into DNA. And that cDNA stands for, um, oh gosh, clonal maybe? I, I can't remember. I, I have to look it up. I'm so sorry. I, I just can't remember. But it's, it's maybe complementary. Um, I just can't remember. But the RNA produces DNA. And then that DNA is now able to carry out um, the processes of transcription and translation. So, um, and this is a picture of what happens with retroviruses. It, there's still the attachment and then the entry of the virus. The virus actually enters the cell by um, endocytosis or phagocytosis. Uh, reverse transcription occurs. The viral RNA is, um, is um, transcribed into DNA, and then the DNA can enter the nucleus, enter, um, can integrate with the host DNA, and now it can begin making new viruses.